Fidel Valdez Ramos, born on March 18, 1928, in Lingayen, the Philippines, is the 12th President of the Philippines and Chairman of the Ramos Peace and Development Foundation. He won a government scholarship to the United States Military Academy at West Point and later studied engineering at the University of Illinois. He held prominent positions under both Marcos's and Aquino's administration. Under Mr. Ramos's administration, the Philippines enjoyed economic growth and stability. The Philippine Stock Exchange in the mid-1990s was among the best in the world. He is considered one of the most effective presidents in the Philippines' history. Mr. Ramos has received several military awards including the Philippine Legion of Honor, the Gold Cross, Philippine Military Merit Medal, the United States Legion of Merit, the French Legion of Honor and the U.S. Military Academy Distinguished Award. He is perhaps the most decorated Philippine soldier in history and one of the most decorated people of the Philippines of all time. During his time as President of the Philippines, Supreme Master Ching Hai went to the Presidential Palace, Malacanang, to ask for his assistance on behalf of the Aulaxis, or Vietnamese refugees, who were at that time refused refugee status by other countries, thus would face repatriation. In response, the President issued an order granting permanent residency to some 5,000 Aulaxis, or Vietnamese refugees. For this great act of compassion and courage, in February 2007, Supreme Master Ching Hai presented the Shining World Leadership Award to Fidel Ramos and often spoke of him with respect and tears of gratitude. She said, He is a great man, kind and loving leader to his people and strangers. On his birthday, he had spent his wealth and time with the poor. The former president has always expressed his appreciation for Supreme Master Ching Hai, as well as his admiration for her own work for peace. In his retirement from public service, which spans over 50 years, Mr. Ramos established the Ramos Foundation for Peace and Development, or RPDEV, in 1999. With the motto of caring, sharing and daring, the foundations extend throughout the Philippines and the larger Asia-Pacific region to empower youth, support sustainable development and poverty alleviation, and develop democratic governance. Up to date, Supreme Master Ching Hai made several donations to support the noble endeavors of his organization. Prior to his planned visit to Formosa or Taiwan, Mr. Ramos expressed his wish to visit the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association Center in Taipei. Thus, on Saturday, February 21, 2009, Mr. Ramos was warmly welcomed from the time of his arrival at the Taipei Airport to his formal reception at our association's Taipei Center in Formosa. Hundreds of our association members were honored to hail the arrival of this hero of peace and recipient of the Shining World Leadership Award from Supreme Master Ching Hai. Although she was not able to receive His Excellency personally, Supreme Master Ching Hai had asked our association members to extend her warmest welcome. Some of the 50 distinguished guests also present from the Philippines and Formosa included MECO Taiwan's Managing Director and Resident Representative Antonio I. Basilio, Chairman of the Clark Economic Zone, Rizalina S. Navarro, Executive Director of Ramos Peace and Development Foundation, Frumencio A. Lagustan, Alison Chow, Secretary of Department of East Asia and Pacific Affairs of the Formosan or Taiwanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Formosa's Director General, Carl Min Koo. During his time in Formosa, the former president was asked to participate as a special and most honored guest in the conference entitled, Act Now! for a more peaceful and safer world. Supreme Master Ching Hai also had been invited as the guest of honor to speak at the conference, 
and His Excellency Mr. Ramos was delighted that she was able to speak with him via video conference to discuss their shared ideals for a more caring, sustainable world. We now invite you to join us for the video conference with Supreme Master Ching Hai and former Philippine President Fidel Ramos. Act now for a more peaceful and safer world. Held on February 21st, 2009 in Taipei, Formosa or Taiwan. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to President Ramos. I dream that all the children will start. I dream that all the children will walk in peace and harmony. This is my dream. Let's welcome His Excellency President Ramos. Mabuhay! Mabuhay! So, so thank you for coming. Please take a seat. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lin and uh, the members of uh, the foundation established and led by uh, the Supreme Master, Ching Hai. Uh, first of all, on behalf of my delegation, uh, Mr. Ambassador Antonio Basilio of the uh, ECO Manila Economic Cultural Office here in Taiwan, former uh, Minister of Trade and Industry, Roy Navarro, and uh, former Vice Minister of Legislative Affairs, uh, Attorney Nick Lagustan. Plus uh, 45 others today who came from Manila. Yes. Yeah. From our sincere heart, we welcome all of you to visit our Formosa, Taiwan, and also visit our Ocean Love Taipei Center. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Uh, may I explain what Mabohai means? One word only. But many, many. Sentiments. One word expresses many sentiments, yes. which are the uh, uh, beloved and cherished values of the Filipino people. Yeah. So great. The meaning is so great. Uh, Mabuhay means. Hello, how are you? Hi. It also means Mabuhay. Uh, welcome to my house. Yes. Ah, welcome yeah. to my house. You are very welcome. Very welcome you, 
Uh, it also means may you have good health, oh, yes. Dr. Lily, yeah. and the uh, Supreme Master. And therefore, may you have long, 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 long life. Yeah. May you have continued success. Continued success. And uh, complete harmony with your neighbors. Oh, harmony. And maybe most important of all, may you have enduring happiness. Enduring. Happiness. Enduring. Enduring. Yeah, long time. Forever happiness. Because uh, you may not have much money, <laughs> but if you are happy, uh, you are better than the one who has plenty of money, yes. but who is not happy. Yes. But uh, mabuhay. <laughs> <laughs> In the Philippines, we do not just say it. We act it. See? <laughs> so when we say mabuhay, will you reach out to your right and to your left and then back and forth and shake the hand of that person that you find there? Okay? Like this. Shake hands, shake hands, shake hands. Please, everyone, shake hands. Thank you. Yeah. But after shaking hands in the Philippines, we embrace and kiss each other. Okay. Uh, at least four times, like this. Oh. That is what Mabohai means. It's yes. a sign of welcome, friendship, hospitality, generosity, compassion, be kind to the poor, and uh, most of all, uh, international friendship. Yes. Peace in the world. Yeah. yeah. Mabuhay. So, so great mean. Thank you for telling us this uh, special mean out Mabuhay. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, His Excellency, President Ramos, and distinguished guests. Welcome to the Supreme Master Qinghai International Association Taipei Center. Now, Chairman Lin will make a welcoming speech for our honored guests. Uh, with greatest honor, on behalf of the Supreme Master Qinghai, I'd like to greet and welcome Your Excellency President Ramos and all of our uh, honorable guests. Managing Director and the Resident Representative of Manila Economic and Culture Office in Taiwan, Mr. Antonio Basilio. Welcome. <laughs> Chairman of Clark Economic Zone, Mr. Rizalino Navarro. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Executive Director of Ramos Peace and Development Foundation, Attorney Framencio Lacustan. <laughs> Director General of Nation Central Library, Mr. Kumin. Secretary of Department of East Asia and the Pacific Affairs Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Elson Chow. <laughs> welcome to Formosa, Taiwan, and welcome to our Love Ocean Taipei Center. One month ago, uh, our association received a letter from President Ramos to inform us that he was coming to Formosa and would like to see us with a brief meeting to discuss our common concerns. I was uh, tremendously happy and touched to hear this uh, wonderful news. Maybe you are not aware, but next month on March 18, 
His Excellency will be 81 years of age. And he is still concerned so much about world peace, people's welfare, and the environment. His caring, sharing, and daring spirit is a noble example for all of us. And because our most beloved master is in Europe with a scheduled, so she cannot come right now to see the president. Therefore, we arrange this video conference meeting for these two great people. As we all know, at this moment, many people worry about the global warming, issue of the environment, the economic crisis, etc. I believe Supreme Master Ching Hai and the President Ramos will give us inspiration and guidance that we can lead a more secure, happier, and a harmonious life. Thank you. Thank you for coming. When we learned that the President Ramos was coming to Formosa, our hearts were full of joy. And so we immediately prepared a very special welcoming program to offer our highest regard for the great honor bestowed upon us. And now, Formosa Band from Ilan Center will play a traditional Chinese music entitled Tea Leaves Harvest Season of Deer Valley Hill. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. Let's thank the Formosan band for the lovely piece. It's amazing how music has the ability to enchant and transport us to another world. That piece, the Dong Ding Tea of Deer Valley, is famous around the world. This music describes the village of girls happily singing a song while picking leaves during the harvest season. The whole melody is full of a delightful atmosphere. Now, among many of the outstanding world leaders, Mr. Ramos is one of the presidents who were honored with the Shining World Leadership Award from Supreme Master Ching Hai. Now, I'd like to invite you to watch the following DVD to appreciate a great moment of this great man. Caring, sharing, and daring is the motto of former Philippine President Fidel Ramos and his organization, the Ramos Peace and Development Foundation. The foundation's works extend throughout the Philippines and the larger Asia-Pacific region to empower youth, support sustainable development and poverty alleviation, and develop democratic governance. Recently, Supreme Master Ching Hai made a 30,000 US dollar donation to the organization. In the Philippines, this amount is equivalent to 418,000 US dollars in the United States based on the local cost of living. Even a decade after the conclusion of his presidency, Mr. Fidel Ramos continues with active contributions to the constructive development of his fellow Philippine citizens through the numerous organizations he leads, advises, and participates in. During his time as President of the Philippines, Supreme Master Ching Hai went to the Presidential Palace Malacanang to ask for his assistance on behalf of the Alexis or Vietnamese refugees, who were at the time refused refugee status by other countries, thus would face repatriation. In response, the President issued an order granting permanent residency to some 5,000 Alexis or Vietnamese refugees. For this great act of compassion and courage, in February 2007, Supreme Master Ching Hai presented the Shining World Leadership Award to Fidel Ramos and often spoke of him with respect and tears of gratitude. She said, He is a great man, kind and loving leader to his people and strangers. On his birthday, he'd spend his wealth and time with the poor. The former president has always expressed his appreciation for Supreme Master Ching Hai, as well as his admiration for her own work for peace. Upon receiving the donation, Mr. Ramos, now chairman of the Ramos Peace and Development Foundation, wrote the following message of gratitude. Dear Supreme Master Ching Hai, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and members of the Ramos Peace and Development Foundation, or RPDEV, allow me to extend our appreciation for your donation of 30,000 US dollars. Your support to the foundation truly reflects your commitment to empowering the Filipino people, especially the youth, as we aspire towards a world-class Philippines. Your caring, sharing, and daring inspires us to work harder as RPDEV continues to contribute its modest efforts to enduring peace and sustainable development for the Asia-Pacific region. Mabuhay! Best wishes, Fidel Ramos. Our respectful accolades, Your Excellency, for your dedication to the interests and empowerment of citizens in the Philippines and beyond. We thank Supreme Master Ching Hai for her many thoughtful contributions to promote greater peace and well-being among the world's people. Wishing the best for all noble endeavors that benefit fellow humans, we pray for the realization of a more heaven-like earth.
President Ramos, you are a very dear and much respected friend of our beloved master. You led the Philippines into prosperity and economic development during your illustrious term as president. In addition, you gave 5,000 Aulak or Vietnamese refugees a new life. In 2007, although you were not able to attend our gathering here in Formosa, our beloved master, during a sincere and touching ceremony, brought flowers to the president's photo on the main stage and praised your excellency for all your noble deeds for humanity. Now, we'd like to review this heartwarming moment. Please. Today, we also wish to humbly show our deepest appreciation and respects, starting with the flower offering. For almost two decades, the Supreme Master Qinghai International Association members often went to Philippines for relief work. There are more and more typhoons and flood disasters due to global warming effect. Master has always instructed us to perform relief work at the start of disasters when help is most needed. Last year, during 2008, relief team went to Philippines four times to provide urgent assistance. Climate change is the most important global issue facing the planet at this moment. Scientists have proven in many ways that climate change is causing natural disasters more frequently and more severely. The scientific solution proposed by Supreme Master Ching Hai, be veg, go green, and save the planet. President, as one of the most renowned leaders of the world and environmentalist, we know that we have to act now for a more peaceful and safer world. But how? Although our beloved master cannot come back to Formosa to welcome you due to her tight schedule, but she has instructed us to welcome you the best as we can, for she has much respect for you. Thankfully, she can talk to you during the video conference. Through this video conference, we can discuss most of the important issues that we're facing today. President Ramos, uh, could you give us a little bit of your opinion on the situation in Philippines right now regarding climate change and uh, climate change refugees? Uh, thank you very much. I uh, first address my uh, humble message to uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai. And uh, equally important to all of you here in uh, Taipei, in Taiwan, which is a very close neighbor to the Philippines. For uh, many, many years now, even as a low-ranking military officer, I have been advocating in my uh, area of responsibility, and then later on as president of the entire Philippines, encompassing our Republic of 7,107 islands during high tide, but more islands during low tide. We must all work together and cooperate closely in making our mother planet Earth safer from uh, climate change due to the uh, growing volume of carbon emissions. Yes. 
emanating from three major sources. Number one, from our uh, manufacturing uh, zones and factories. Number two, from our uh, so many vehicles burning uh, oil and gas in our streets. And uh, number three, from uh, the pollution of the environment that comes from uh, the dirty and uh, primitive power plants that many of our countries still operate, including in the Philippines. And so, uh, as President, I uh, advocated among the developing countries during the uh, well-known, now famous uh, Kyoto Conference of 1997 to 1998, where the Kyoto Protocol on uh, Environmental Protection and uh, Protection Against uh, Global Warming took place. The Philippines was the uh, main advocate among the developing countries, and that includes some of the big giants like uh, China, India, and Brazil, as well as all of ASEAN, to uh, agree to the protocol and for their chief delegates and ministers to sign that protocol right there and then in uh, Kyoto. And we were so happy that uh, most of the developing countries, as well as most of the developed countries, agreed to the protocol. And in our own country, we were among the first to ratify by act of Congress the Kyoto Protocol. So did most of the developing countries that we urged to also agree to the uh, implementation of the protocol to give due protection and conservation to the environment. Unfortunately, some of the developed, the more advanced, the bigger countries, after their ministers signed the agreement in Kyoto in 1998, did not ratify that very important international convention. And so, up to now, we do not have full cooperation around the world in uh, limiting or uh, reducing carbon emissions into the atmosphere. And therefore, we all still need to work harder, cooperate more closely, and uh, educate the people of the world about this great danger that uh, threatens all people, all countries, regardless of whether they are rich, poor, big, small, advanced, or uh, least developed. The threat is upon everybody. That is uh, simply explained, and that is because the resources of uh, the good earth, our mother nature earth, are finite, they are limited. But then the population of the world continues to grow every minute. And therefore there is greater and greater demand on our natural resources, especially air, water, and food. And so we must continue this uh, cooperation that we have established and carry it on to the next generation and to the next generations after that, so that uh, there will be a healthier, cleaner, safer, and more prosperous world for the younger ones after us, including the still unborn. After all, we on earth right now do not own the earth. We are just the stewards. We are just the guardians for uh, succeeding people to enjoy a better kind of life.
so that in the end, there will be no more wars, no more hunger, no more poverty, no more deprivation, no more injustice. And we will truly have just one world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much to share with us uh, right now um, what's occurring in Philippines and to understand that we are all connected. We are all part of the same planet, the one home, as you mentioned. Uh, I also am aware that in the Philippines, they are encouraging a lot of organic farming or organic agriculture. And uh, you would agree that it starts at an individual level. The, the whole process of working together, the responsibility would start at an individual level. That is correct. In fact, uh, the responsibility of each individual, and that means you, and you, and you, and everybody behind me. It starts at the dinner table. <laughs> the simple rule in our family, and this is our teaching, Mrs. Ramos and myself to our children, and now because they themselves are parents to their own children, who are our grandchildren, to finish everything in your plate and finish every drop of water in your glass. Because anything that is wasted here will be thrown into the garbage. And then that garbage will go into the uh, canal. And then the canal will flow into the river and poison the fresh water. And eventually that will flow into the sea and further pollute the oceans. So, uh, the best rule is you finish everything in your plate and do not waste any water. Because the amount of water in the world is exactly the same now as it was millions of years ago. It's finite. It's not limitless. But yet, more and more water is being drunk by more and more people. And then eventually, there will be not enough water between my brother and me. And even if Dr. Lin is my best friend here in Taiwan, in this center, someday we might fight each other. Because there is only one glass of water between the two of us. And so, uh, if you carry out that uh, reasoning further, it is possible that uh, the next global war will not take place because of nuclear weapons or uh, a competition for oil or uh, a food, but it will come from the lack of water between two brothers. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I've just been informed, we'd like to invite Supreme Master Ching Hai. Master, are you there? Yeah. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, Master. Hello. Hello, sir, and everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Master, you look stunning. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time, Master. We know you have a very busy schedule and you work so hard for us. No, I love to see the president even personally, just I can't. First of all, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, Taiwanese government and officials uh, for facilitating this event. And I also thank the association members for your full support in organizing this uh, special conference to greet the great uh, President Ramos and making him feel a little comfortable. <laughs> Welcome, at least, after all this uh, long voyage of travel and uh, enduring all this inconvenience of uh, a long 
long flight. Yes, I hope you're okay, sir. Are you all right, sir? Uh, I am uh, better than the others. Thank you. <laughs> you are so good. You are so good. You are always good. <laughs> My humble greeting and uh, well wishes to all of your distinguished entourage as well as the honor guests present in uh, our assembly today. I wish you all the best, and may the divine grace be with you always. And now, if you give me permission, I would like to address His <laughs> Excellency, former President Ramos of the Philippines, because I feel so sorry that I could not be there to greet him personally and to bow to him personally again. Welcome, benevolent sir, Mr. Ramos. For me, you are Mr. Ramos, <laughs> my hero, <laughs> not the president even. You're more than president. <laughs> you have come from far away, from beyond the great sea and high mountains of another nation to grace Formosa and our meditation center with your gracious presence. I feel so privileged, like all of us there, but I feel so regretful not to be there with you in person to show my respect. I just hope that you can uh, forgive me. It's just that there has been arrangement long ahead, many months ahead, even a year ahead, for me to meet my students and particularly these, uh, many of which from overseas, if they cannot see me now, like if I cancel the meeting, they might never be able to see me again in the future uh, due to some restriction of their country's visa policy. I'm sure you are aware of that. Not every country is Philippine. <laughs> And not every country has such a freedom that the Philippines government offer to their co-citizens. Now, but there are also other reasons for me as well that I cannot mention. You know, there are the price to pay for whatever we do. <laughs> you know that. Uh, so please, I tell you all this so that you will find in your heart to forgive me for not being there, and so that you know that I very much like to be there physically. We are so honored, and uh, I am personally very grateful for your esteemed visit in Formosa. Right now, uh, the Vietnamese in Taiwan, as well as all over the world, are rejoicing through uh, the Supreme Master TV live broadcast of your visit. Moreover, billions of global viewers who watch the Supreme Master Television would have also the chance to see your compassionate countenance. Sir, every time I think of your grand gesture of uh, magnanimosity many years back, heroically saving thousands of homeless, helpless Vietnamese refugees' lives, I still feel a surge of, of gratitude, grateful sentiment that fills my heart, and often tears wells in my eyes still. And I'm sure, so that numerous Vietnamese people would have the same feeling as I have. We are forever in debt to your fatherly kindness. As the Bible stated, I will make you the father of many nations. You are the beacon of that godly promise which goes beyond any border and human's limit. I have uh, not enough words to express my emotion and gratefulness to you. I pray God to protect you. 
May your stay in Formosa be pleasant and successful in your noble endeavor to bridge nations and people in building a sustainable, better, loving, and peaceful world. And may heaven watch over you, sir, and light your way for more goodwill missions to come. And may the relation between Formosa and the Philippines flourish in mutual respect and lasting friendship. Thank you again for your visit. We love you. Mabuhay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for your kind words personally, but uh, we acknowledge that uh, your message of goodwill and uh, friendship and uh, harmony is for all peoples, regardless of where they are, regardless of in what condition they may be, and regardless of what they hope for the future. If we all work together hard enough, I'm sure their aspirations and their hopes can be fulfilled. Thank you. That's right. Sir. That's right. <laughs> and please convey my greetings and best wishes to Mrs. Ramos, because as they say, behind a great man, there's always a great woman. <laughs> And I wish your family all the best <laughs> and happiness. Thank you, sir. President Ramo and honored guests have come to Formosa to Grace Taipei Center. We have just shown our distinguished guests some of your celestial art creations. Master, in the past, people have strived to help political refugees, but now the focus turns on climate refugees. Master, in this critical time, how can we have a more peaceful and safer world? Could you and the President, Ramos, give us some suggestions on how we can act now to mitigate climate change and to save our planet? Here we have two questions for President Ramos and Master. First question, global climate anomalies show the influence from climate change in our world. According to the latest research, there are 2,000 islands at risk of being submerged. There are 25 million people uprooted in 2007 alone as climate refugees. What's your solution to the international crisis facing climate refugees? Please, yes, sir. please. <laughs> sir. Uh, beauty before age first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not sure who's older than whom. <laughs> I have never asked your your age, sir, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, as a, a statesman, I think you might have more experience in uh, governing than I am. Uh, that's why, uh, could you please uh, answer this question? And any leftover that you have forgotten, maybe I can chip in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I uh, started earlier by uh, citing a very simple example of what an individual and his family or her family can do. And that begins with uh, wise and uh, a sharing kind of consumption. Let us not waste anything in our households. Let us save for those that do not have as much as we have. And let us also spread the word about uh, our common responsibility to our respective communities, our respective nations, and to the world at large. But let us accept that the fight against global warming, which leads to climate change, begins with the individual person and his or her family. Having said that, let me add that uh, communities 
whether a small village or a big province, must likewise cooperate in order that the national policy that will govern taking care of Mother Nature and thus preventing global warming and climate change becomes a generational, continuous national policy instead of being limited just to the one term of a president or a prime minister. And then after that, there is a new successor and the policy is reversed or overturned. Uh, that will not solve our global problem of uh, climate change. The uh, entire community of nations beyond that must learn to cooperate more closely because it is a threat to everyone's better future. Even if right now they may be very affluent, they may be very advanced, they may be even very self-sufficient. But in the end, Mother Nature will punish everyone unless now, today, we take responsibility for uh, performing our duty to the world and to ourselves by uh, protecting the environment. Overall, we need to network more and more at the level of governments and nations. But likewise, because this is still a very uh, loose or uneven or unorganized kind of collaboration, the non-government organizations around the world, including the uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai Foundation and our own Ramos Peace and Development Foundation, plus thousands of others around the world, must uh, close ranks and uh, really apply pressure on those governments, big or small, that do not yet fully cooperate with the global protocol or convention or agreement on uh, the prevention of global warming and therefore the prevention of climate change. The NGOs like us must uh, collaborate even more closely than uh, we have done before. And maybe we can lead the example for the governments themselves, if they cannot, on their own, because of so many political considerations, come to one agreement, and that is the protection of our mother planet Earth. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. 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 Well said, sir. Well said. Master, yeah. could you be kind enough to share with us some of your ideas, please? The president has said it all. And uh, he is right that we have to work together with the government, provided the government accept our suggesting ideas and even support. We also support the governments if they let us. And I think all the governments should let us. Yes. Some uh, powerful GNO would have had more uh, saying in the government's policy, more than the small group like us. But we are behind all of these powerful GNO in any case at all, in any way we can, we help to support or doing anything possible to strengthen their power and to encourage their endeavor so that the government will work with all the people in order to protect this only home that we have. The president is right. We must unite together all the people who cares for the planet 
and uh, to let the government uh, know that it's time to act. They have to be also awakened. The government should not be too busy submerging themselves in some of the issues which might not be so urgent as saving the planet right now. Thank you, Master. And I think I have one more wish that uh, all the nations who has more favorable situation, like more land, more economically sound situation, must accept the so-called climate refugees because they are truly refugees. Without any excuse, without any delay, all the big country, the able country, should help to settle them in their country, to support, to protect, and to afford them any possible means to make their new home or their nation within that nation. Only doing that, we will truly show the spirit of brotherhood. We truly can proclaim that we are the light bearer of God. Any nation who has faith in God at all must help the weaker brothers and sisters. Especially we are all responsible for global warming, including myself. Especially we are all responsible for global warming, which caused their present a predicament in any case, in the first place, which caused them to lose their home. So any able countries, please, we must help them and quick. We must give them land, we must give them economic support and all the moral support and anything at all to make them feel safe and at home again in the new territory. Thank you so much in advance. And thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Sir, if you could uh, please, um, regarding political refugees to climate refugees, this is a very important worldwide issue. Could you give us some of your suggestions on the refugee situation? The uh, original uh, Vietnamese boat people after uh, 1975, for a long period, were the uh, examples of uh, political refugees. In today's world, while uh, many of these original political refugees have already been resettled and have become stabilized in their family and community lives, uh, a new kind of refugee is being created because of global warming. Uh, first of all, those that are uh, out there in the uh, Pacific and Indian Oceans, subject to the uh, ravages of global warming, which is manifested by the rise of the uh, mean ocean level every day. Uh, by small increments, but in their totality, you see, uh, they create floods and damage and death, of course, to so many of those living on small islands. Uh, those out there in the Pacific Ocean, those in the uh, coastal areas of the Indian Ocean, I mentioned that in the case of the Philippines, this is our misfortune because we are an archipelago of 7,107 islands during high tide. That's right. And then more islands appear during low tide. Uh, we are the second largest archipelagic nation in the world next to Indonesia. And so we are not only concerned, but more concerned than others in regard to uh, climate change because of global warming. 
we can visualize our uh, large cities like Manila or Cebu or uh, Davao which are coastal communities to slowly disappear as the level of the Pacific Ocean and we're in the middle of that as well as the level of the China Sea and we're also in the middle of that because the Philippines happens to be at the junction of these two great oceans the Pacific Ocean and the South China Sea and so unless we ourselves uh, provide and implement the protective as well as the preventive measures at this time now it is uh, foreseeable that maybe within one generation much of our coastal communities will disappear under just one meter of uh, the rise of the Pacific Ocean and the South China Sea. Fortunately for us in the Philippines, unlike the small Pacific nations out there, like Fiji, Vanuatu, Micronesia, eh, Nauru, uh, Kiribati, they have no more other areas to run to in case that ocean becomes higher and higher. They can only climb the coconut trees in order to survive. Oh, God. But in our case here in Taiwan, Japan, Indonesia, and the Philippines, there is still some high mountains to which to seek refuge. But, again, uh, that will just be only temporary survival. Right. In the end, if that water level keeps rising and rising, even the highest mountain will be submerged. But we don't have to wait for that condition to be reached. That's right. Because as I said, as the space becomes smaller and smaller, the food becomes less and less, and very soon there's only one glass of water remaining near the top of the mountain between my brother, this guy here on my right, who is always smiling, and myself. But we do not want that to happen. We don't want to reach that point. Because right now we can still do something about it. If we collaborate more closely as governments and more closely as non-government organizations or NGOs. And for governments and NGOs within nations to collaborate even more closely than they're doing now. Thank you. Dear Master, would you like to contribute as well? Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I think uh, the President has told you everything. <laughs> uh, he is very right. The, the situation is really urgent. And honestly, every day I'm worried as much as the President is about the fate of many people such as the one in those small islands where there is nowhere to go. It's truly so desperate, and uh, it must have been very scary for these people, and I don't know how to comfort them. I just don't know what else to do for them. I wish and pray all the able government and great nations Please help them. Please take them in your country and make them a nation there. After all, they're also human like us, and they suffer the way we do. Just put ourselves in their situation. Then we will know how they feel. Suppose it's us. Suppose it's me. Suppose it's you who are in that situation. How would you feel? So please, great nations, able nations, please give them some piece of land. It won't be much. They are able people. They are dignified people. And suddenly they have become hopeless and beggars. But they will rise again.
given that they have enough uh, time and uh, comfort and a place to settle down, then they will begin their life again, and I'm sure they will be a great contribution to your nations as well. Please, for God's sake, help these people before it's too late. We cannot just sit here and watch them drowning. Thank you, Master. Thank you, sir, for reminding us of that. Thank you very much, Master. We do hope we do something so that we can stop the rising sea level the way it is right now and not getting worse so that other nations can still help the already sinking nations. Otherwise, if we all sunk, then, oh, God help us. Our following question. The whole world is now an economic recession with higher unemployment. Is it the right time to encourage the use of self-sustainable, simple organic farming techniques? Should we return to a more simple way of agriculture and encourage a loving plant-based diet? Sir. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, we hosted in Cebu, in the Central Philippines, uh, last September, the Asia-Pacific Conference on uh, Sustainable Production and Sustainable Consumption. Uh, we were not talking about long-term development as uh, we pursue under the umbrella of the United Nations, pursue one to uh, the UN's Earth Agenda 21, Agenda for the 21st Century. But we discussed uh, very short-term measures in Cebu that have to do with uh, producing with total efficiency a certain item needed by human beings must be uh, the result of maximum efficiency so that nothing is wasted. At the same time, we must also change our patterns of consumption. Uh, again, I go back to my simple uh, model in our own home of eating everything on your plate and drinking every bit of water in your glass. Because we must think all the time about the 51% of the world's people who do not have enough to eat. They do not get three meals a day, as you and I do, or eight glasses of water. Maybe the food they may eat is coming from garbage, because they have to scavenge from the garbage can the food that they must eat. They have nothing else. And maybe the water they're drinking is dirty water, just, you know, drawn or picked up from the nearby river, which is already so polluted. So this is the condition of uh, a majority of the world today. The UN says that uh, more than half of the world's people are earning the equivalent of one U.S. dollar a day. Uh, that's what? Uh, 47 Philippine pesos, or uh, 35, 34 New Taiwan dollars. It's so small as an average. And therefore, it's our responsibility who are more comfortable. And this is said in the Bible, and also in the Quran, and in the Holy Book of the uh, Jewish nations, that it is our responsibility to prosper our neighbors if they are needy, right. if they are in want, if they are poor, if they are suffering, if they are deprived, if they are disadvantaged. We must look around us and see how the rest of the community are uh, doing, are living, are existing. And surely, we all have neighbors who are very much more in need than we are right now where we are. So let's have a thought next time we sit down for a meal for those people out there who are not getting much on a daily basis. There are many countries where the average food intake is 
3,500 calories when what is needed is maybe for that age group 2,500 calories. The rest of it is thrown away as garbage. And then maybe some people from the same country, from the same community, look through the garbage where that food was thrown to get their daily meal. Uh, this is to me uh, uh, inhuman already. So, uh, the practical means of making sure that we consume wisely and produce wisely is uh, to be simpler, to be more efficient, and to be totally uh, cooperative. Uh, what happens to those that uh, eat at the rate of 3,500 calories a day? They become overweight. They overwork their hearts. Their cardiovascular system does not flow right. efficiently because of high cholesterol blockage. Right. And they cannot exercise very much anymore because they become lazy. Uh, they feel uh, sleepy. Yeah. Instead of uh, being fit right. and energetic, like Supreme Master Ching Hai, she's all over, yeah. and she shows it, and the results of her advocacies and her uh, humanitarian activities are evident everywhere. Seventeen centers here in uh, Taiwan, Formosa alone, and so many more outside, uh, and so uh, each of us has a responsibility to last as long as possible on earth so that we continue to be able to help our neighbors. In other words, uh, we must also exist, survive, work, not for ourselves or for our immediate families, but also for others. Uh, this is why our foundation has adopted a very simple uh, motto, three words, caring, sharing, and daring. Uh, caring and sharing, very easy to do. But daring is so much more difficult because that means daring to give more than to take. Meaning, daring also to enhance the environment instead of abusing it. Daring also means to take united action as people, as families, as nations for the common good. And uh, maybe just as important, daring in order to make a difference. So uh, it all adds up to what uh, uh, this center is uh, all about. And uh, it also, uh, in uh, an equal manner, is what our own foundation is trying to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You are very daring, sir, also. You are really doing what you preach. <laughs> yes. Back uh, many years ago, when the whole world say that the Vietnamese refugee must go home, nobody wants to accept them anymore. You are the only one that go against that train, that you could have offended other nations, you could have offended other leaders, but you did it. You just let them stay in Philippines because you are daring. And you are the man of your world. And that's why we respect you so much. It's easy to say, not easy to do. <laughs> you are the doer. <laughs> And we are so honored to know you in this lifetime. You are a very good example of a true man. Thank you for being with us on this planet. <laughs> Dear Master, um, could you share with us also some insight on the same topic? I will just uh, chip in. <laughs> Thank you. I will just uh, pick up what the leftover maybe or emphasize what the president has already said. You see, uh, 
maybe、uh, some of you don't know, in 1995, even long time ago, President Ramos has already talked about、uh, environmental protection. I'm sure he has done way before that. But、uh, as he wasn't a president, maybe his voice wasn't all that publicized. But in 1995, I remember there was a conference. Uh, on population, environment, and peace, and the president has emphasized that、uh, there is a need, a real need, for a sustainable balance. If I quote it right, a sustainable balance between man and nature, between development and the environment. You see, so President Ramos was、uh, very、uh, protective of the environment. Long before it became even a trend nowadays, his foresight, wisdom, has exceed far beyond our present vision of the world climate change. He knew it before that. He saw it before that. So、uh, I think、uh, organic farming would satisfy this need that the president has mentioned back in even 1995. Before we even make this global warming into a so-called fashionable trend, so I think the president has said that there is a need for a sustainable balance between man and nature, between development and、uh, the environment. I think the need will be satisfied with all the farmers、um, change into organic farming method. In that case, we will be able to balance the need between our、uh, development and the environment, our need and sustainable planet. The benefit of organic farming is immense, including great advantage to both human health and the environment. Organic farming、uh, actually restores the Topsoil and cleans the air and water supplies. Even it is so much more benefit that we could not list them all in a few minutes. It is even good for animals, all beings on this planet, including even trees and land. In part because it does not use chemical fertilizer or pesticides. Many of which are considered by the United States Environment Protection Agency and the European Union to be potentially cancer-causing, and also depleting of our bees colonies, and killing many others animals that we cannot even or name here. One of the U.S. studies. Uh, indicate that、uh, if the United States a millions acres of produce farms went organic, then the risk of consuming dietary pesticides would be reduced by 97 percent. Can you imagine? Chemical fertilizer and pesticide runoff is also known to contribute to the ocean dead zones. We are killing our planet. By pesticides and chemical fertilizer. Now, scientific studies have found that、uh, organic farming not only reduces energy、uh, usage and produces less CO2, which helps lower greenhouse gases, but it actually allows the soil to absorb even 40% of presently、uh, in the air CO2 emission. Before we even invent any、uh, technology to reduce CO2, or before we even reduce all the cars and transportations, if we go organic, we reduce 40% of the current CO2 in the air already, and the daily emission. Now, furthermore, organic produce is free of、uh, genetically modified organisms. And its nutrient content is actually higher than that of conventional grown fruits and vegetables. It is for these reasons that、uh, we in our group use as much organic produce as much as possible. First, 
to encourage the organic farming to develop and progress and prosper more into a better trend for everyone to enjoy. Second, of course, is for our planet. And third, for our health and all that on this planet. I wish that all the governments in the world would encourage uh, organic farming to save our world. Give them subsidies. Give them all the facilitated uh, means in order for the farmer to continue the organic farming method because it's not only helping them, it's helping the planet and all the people. I'm sure if the government support organic farming, it will be a trend in no time. If the government lead the way with the message that it is how to be green and how to protect the planet, then the farmers would be happy to grow more vegan food. To spread the practice of organic farming would help uh, in so many ways. The benefit of organic farming for human livelihood, for human health, and for animals' health, natural resources, and uh, protection of uh, our planet all these benefits we cannot even uh, underestimate. We cannot even estimate all in here. Organic farming not only helps to protect the planet, it will even help to eliminate hunger. So I just suggest vegan organic or organic vegan, if you don't like. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, sir, for your good uh, answer and for inspiring me for the further ideas <laughs> of your of the questions thank you master you have to thank the president he inspired me all that yes thank you sir thank you mr president <laughs> European Parliament supports reducing meat to lower greenhouse gases. Call vote. Vote is now open. Reduce your meat consumption or stop eating meat totally. During discussions on greenhouse gas reduction goals, the Climate Committee of the European Parliament officially recognized livestock's contribution to global warming and recommended a reduction of subsidies to the livestock industry to curb methane. My name is Jan Solm. I'm a member of the European Parliament. Please, be veg, go green, save the planet. Master, regarding the organic farming in combination with a simple life, could you tell us more of that? A natural way of, of living, a more simple way of living? As the president has stated, we have to be frugal. We started from the table already. We should not eat too much. We should just eat enough or even a little bit less so that, number one, Okay, physically and practically speaking, we uh, can uh, uh, last longer. Hmm? The more we eat, the less we will have. And other people will be hungry. And spiritually speaking, we should not eat too full. Even with vegetarian food, 80% full is enough so that God's light and wisdom can be also filling our being with a better understanding about what to do with ourselves and how to help others and how to live a true humane life while we are on this planet. Without God's light and wisdom, we are reduced to merely mortal, working, eating, sleeping, producing children, and die. There's not much we can contribute to our great self and other people, meaning they are also great beings on this planet. 
So being frugal is the key. Being frugal meaning also we go organic and vegan because this method will help to eliminate the excessive use of natural resources for producing meat and dairy products. And in that case, we will have enough to feed everybody and also reduce the CO2, reduce the methane, reduce all the toxic gas, even hydrogen sulfide. You know the one that uh, if you inhale it, when it's too condensed, you will die immediately. That is produced also by animal rising livestock and methane also. If we uh, reduce the Mm, livestock raising, then we can reduce all the toxic gases that is, uh, you know, lingering in our air right now. And if we go organic, vegan, then everything will be back to normal before and even better. The weather will become better. Not only the ice stop melting, the toxic gas will be reduced, hunger will be eliminated, War will be done with, but also our planet will revive itself and will become even better than now, more lushful, more plentiful, more abundant for all to enjoy in clean air, peace, love, good health, and long life. Thank you so much. Hydrogen sulfide, yes. That, that is one of the toxic gases, deadly gases, which emitted from livestock. Yes. Another is methane. Another is, oh, of course, CO2. And the methane can even trigger more CO2 if it warms the climate. Thank you so much. We can talk forever about this. But um, as the president said, we have to be frugal in all means. Frugal. Yeah? Saving everything we can. And the best way, the quickest, is to be organic vegan so encourage organic farming be vegan my humble opinion and after all the research thank you so much thank you master thank you for this inspiring speech vegetarianism and religion The Baha'i Faith, regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selections from the Baha'i Writings of Some Aspects of Health and Healing Buddhism, all meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra Gaudai the most important thing is to stop killing, because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we owe them a blood debt. Teachings of the Saints Christianity Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Holy Bible And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mencius. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feasts of blood, and if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve Hinduism Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adilila He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu Islam Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Hadith Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Hadith Jainism 
A true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been especially prepared for him involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Kritanga Judaism And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Holy Bible Blood meaning flesh Sikhism Those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib Taoism Do not go into the mountain to catch birds and nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox that plows your field. Tract of the Quiet Way Tibetan Buddhism The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous failure, the supreme path of discipleship. Zoroastrianism Those plants I, Ahura Mazda, or God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow. Avesta Everybody knows that vegetarian diet is good for health and to save the planet. They will be awakening their own great compassionate loving self-nature and then their level of consciousness will rise up automatically and they will understand more than they ever did and they'll be closer to heaven than what they are right now. Thank you, sir. <laughs> he inspires me, the president. I think he inspires us all. Yes, I'm so happy he came to Taiwan. My God, he honors us so much. And even come to our humble meditation center. Oh, I'm sorry I haven't got even a better place for you, sir. This is all we got. <laughs> I mean, in some other cities, we have also a meditation center. And in Europe, we have some one or two meditation center with about 20 rooms or something like that. And I could even afford a, a couple of rooms or all the rooms for you and your entourage. But in Taipei, I didn't even really have a very good center yet. <laughs> I'm sorry that we have not treated you like God the way you deserve. Thank you and forgive us. Yes, you inspire us all with your heroic uh, spirit. Please do live long with us. <laughs> Please do live among us long to inspire us further and to help the world. We need you now. We need your example. Daring, you know. Sharing is easier, as you said, sharing, caring. You can show caring when you feel touched by some special situation, you know, now and again, individually. Sharing, okay, we have enough money, why not? We give a little bit, it's okay, it's easy. But daring, not everybody has it. Not everybody has it. It's very difficult to be daring. <laughs> and yes. please, uh, be a shining example continuously. Be daring. You know, show everybody how to be daring. Thank you very much, sir. Due to the president's tight schedule, we only had these two questions for the video conference, so we do apologize for that. Thank you, President Ramos. Uh, you often said, caring, sharing, daring. Today, the issue discuss is absolutely with a caring and sharing heart. You said in the past, if more people were daring enough, maybe the world would be a better world. Yeah. At the end, allow us to quote your speech ending, Ma Buhai, long life, as you gave us a perfect example and definition. Earth 2000, 3000, 4000, infinity. Forever.
let us please give a big round of applause to thank His Excellency and all the distinguished guests. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all the honorable guests. May you be well, live long. <laughs> may you be well, may you be very well and lucky. Thank you for coming to Taiwan. Thank you for visiting our humble center. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless the Philippines.